Compound interest formula, as this just warms up, what is the compound interest formula? Someone say it for me. It starts with an A. Okay, uh, principal, P for principal, times what? One plus, usually R in here, to the power of N. Okay, and the, some of them can be lowercase, it doesn't really matter. Okay, now just quickly let's remember what's going on. Uh, you've got an amount that your, your sum of money is growing to. Okay, you've got the principal, which is how much you start with. You've got a rate, an interest rate, and then you've got an amount of time that you're putting your investment, your money in the bank for, right? Now, just hold on for a second, right? Remember when we started logs? We said logs are all about asking this question. Something's growing, and it's growing for some amount of time, okay? Now, if all you're interested in is, I know how long it's gonna grow for, I just wanna know how much I get at the end, you don't need logs, you don't need that to answer that question. Exponentials will be fine, okay? For instance, I could say, uh, if I have, $100 and it's growing at, I don't know, 8% interest and I'm going to grow for 10 years, okay? I know how to do exponentials, I'm just going to plug that into my calculator and off I go and I'll get an answer at the end. But logarithms are about turning it things around, right? About asking a different question. If I want to know instead of I've got this amount of money and I've got this amount of interest and this amount of time, if I don't know what the time is, right? That's the question that logs are asking, remember? How long did it take your thing in your growing box to get to such and such a size? Well, it's just the difference is our growing box is a bank account. That's the only difference. That's what bank accounts are, actually, growing boxes. At least you hope they are, okay? So let's have a look at this particular question, number five. Um, let me make it bigger for you so you can actually read it. Okay, I'll leave my moving there. Now, have a look with me. As is often the case, because this is like this is a real life situation, so they don't just hand you a, an equation, you have to read this carefully, interpret, and fit it into the equation you already know. <coughs> read with me. Um, determine the number of years to the nearest year. So again, they're asking about this guy up here. That's what they want to know. Determine the number of years it will take an investment of $1,000. Pause. Investment of $1,000. If you're investing $1,000, where does that belong in this formula? That's the principle, isn't it? So I'm just going to write that down straight away. Okay. To grow to $2,000, right? $2,000, where's that going to go? That's the amount. That's how you're going to, that's where you're going to end up, right? If it earns compound interest at a rate of 6% per annum, where do I stick that guy in? Oh, right. That should be the rate, and because it's a percentage, I want to write it here as a decimal, right? So I'm going to write that as 1 plus 0. 0. 0.06, and then this gap here is the one I want to solve, okay? Now, <coughs> I can simplify this a little bit, right? I've just evaluated the, the information in the question here in my formula, right? What kinds of things can I do to simplify this before I turn it on? All right, good. I can divide both sides by 1,000, okay? So you can follow along with me. I can say 2 over there, one plus 0 0.06, I don't need to write that as two numbers, that's just 1.06 to the power of n. Okay, now this is an exponential equation, right? It's got an index, so how do I rewrite it as a log equation? I'll give you a clue, it starts with an n, right? n equals log, now, when I'm converting, yeah, the base turns into the base, right? Base to base. So that's the base there. So it will become the base here. You see that? Okay. And then I've only got one number left over. So the two just hangs in there. Okay. Now, before we evaluate this thing and use our new law, okay, um, remember what logs mean? Remember when I kept on talking about my Rido growing machine, right? This means, tell me how long it will take. If my growing machine grows at the rate of 1.06, until what? Until it's double the size when you started, right? That's double the size you started. You see how this is exactly the metaphor that you need because that's exactly what bank accounts do, okay? Now at this point, remember how we said, ah, uh, why do we do this is because sometimes you get weirdo looking bases that are hard to work with. Well, 1.06 is a weirdo looking base, right? So I'm gonna use my change of base law and I'm simply going to evaluate it, right? I can say, According to the change of base law, you look at here, I've got the base here, 
And I've got the thing that's growing to here. An easy way to remember it is, you've got the numbers and they're literally like above and below each other. So here's the lower one and here's the higher one. And so the lower one becomes the lower one and the higher one becomes the higher one, right? So really simply, I'm gonna write this as log two on log 1.06, okay? There's the change of base law. And that I can stick into my calculator, right? Can someone pop it in for me? 11.8956. Wait, did you do the ln of both of them? It doesn't matter, remember? Because I can choose any base I like. So I'll still get whichever, whichever button you pressed. Um, if I put in ln2 and ln1.06, still get the same number. At least we should, okay? Um, now, does that answer the question? What was the question? Um, determine the number of years to the nearest year. To the nearest year. Now, <coughs> clearly it looks like 12 here. We kind of got lucky. We kind of got lucky because 11.89 obviously rounds up. Okay. Just suppose, play make believe with me for a second. Suppose it wasn't 11.89. Suppose it was 11.19. Okay. Now this rounds down, doesn't it? So you'd usually say, oh, I guess that means 11 years. Okay. Just one little problem, okay? This is the subtle difference between just doing pure mathematics out in the middle of nowhere and, hey, I'm actually trying to make some money, right? If I say 11, if I say 11, I don't need to guess how much money I've got in my account. I have a compound interest formula, right? I can work it out. So in fact, I know it's gonna be $1,000, that's what I started with, right? Times 1.06, that's what's happening with the interest and the growth, to the power of 11. Off you go, crunch it out, you'll get a number with some weird decimals after it, okay? Can someone quickly tell me what it is? I can tell you it starts with a one. 1,898 blah, 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 okay? Hey, wait, what happened? I was trying to grow to two grand and I clearly didn't get there. Why not? Obviously I didn't get two grand because I rounded this down, so this is also gonna go down. Right? So in this question, and if they're crafted well for you, you should be fine. You can see it just rounds, and no big deal, okay? But if I want to get to a certain amount of money, in a real way, you know what? You're gonna round up no matter what, okay? Because if I want to get to at least $2,000, then I need to go past this point, not reverse in time, because at that point, I won't actually have my two grand, okay? So do you see, like, think about the question you're answering. Right? And don't just round because I know how to round. Think about why you're rounding and what effect rounding down or rounding up has. Okay, Okay. now, you can see how I use the change of base law here, but remember I said to you, you don't have to know the change of base law. How would I solve this question? And I'll give you a clue. We go from here. How would I solve this question without the change of base law? See if you can remember back to this question. You can still do it. How can I do it? Very good. Taking logs of both sides, uh, this step, that's what really made the change of base law work. Okay, and it's how we solved this question in the first place. Okay, so really quickly, you don't have to write this down, but if I um, take logs of both sides, I'm going to get log 2 equals log of this thing. Right, what do I do with that? What can I do? I can move the power out the front. Right, that's going to become m log 1.06 over there, and the log 2 is still hanging out. And then just to get n, I divide, which is exactly what, oops, sorry, which is exactly what the change of base law told me, just slightly quicker, okay? So if you forget your change of base law, no big deal, okay? You can still see I get there. In fact, there's my line, which is exactly the same as that, okay? But this just sort of quickens it a little bit, and you'll need to learn it eventually anyway, okay? Yes. Um, I feel like if I did that, um, I would probably write log 1.06 over log yeah. 2. You mean when you're going from here to here? Yeah. Yeah, that is, a, that is absolutely a common error, okay? Now, by the way, just in case that happened, let's just imagine this, right? At this point, oops, I, I do it backwards, okay? Okay, now, what would this mean? What would this mean? When I put this in, I'm going to get a number out, aren't I? Let's, let's have a look at what number I get. I'm going to get, uh, let's try this out, 1.06. Okay, now, <coughs> excuse me. The number I'm getting is 0 0.084, okay, 0 0.084. Now, at this point, and I try and mention as much as I possibly can, okay? You're always doing a common sense check. You're always doing it wherever you can apply common sense to the question, okay? Now what this is saying is, oh yeah, after like 
This is all in years, right? This is like 0 0.08 of a year is like one month thereabouts, okay? Um, after one month, my money has magically doubled. That's pretty impressive. All wrong, okay? So then you think, oh, okay, um, something has gone wrong, right? and then you pedal back, and you pedal back until you identify where the error could possibly have been. And then you see, oh no, I've, I've done things upside down, okay? And in some ways, like, you know, this is just algebra, it's just rearranging things, and it's just the logs being there makes things a little bit harder to see. But you can identify the error easily enough, okay?